Hi everyone, welcome to PCB Coffee Talk. I am Tara Dunn with Omni PCB. And I'm Liz Foradori with Omni PWB. During our sessions, Elizabeth and I focus on things related to printed circuit board design and manufacturing. Today we'll be chatting with Robin Hansen of McDermott Electronic Solutions about final surface finish selection. Robin, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tara and Elizabeth, for inviting me. And, and as we have been discussing, final surface finish selection is certainly a big topic. Final finishes include immersion tin, immersion silver, OSP, ENIG, ENIPIG, Hassle, both lead and lead-free, just to name a few. And it would be great if there was a one-size-fits-all solution, but in reality there is no one final finish that fulfills all the requirements in the industry. The selection really depends on the user's needs. So during today's discussion, we're going to focus on the surface finish selection from the OEM perspective. Robin, what types of things do you recommend to be taken into consideration when evaluating surface finishes? Considerations for surface finish choice includes a variety of things, um, whether it is a lead or a lead-free assembly. A lead-free assembly requires elevated temperatures. Uh, the cost, when you don't, uh, you don't want to put an expensive finish on a board that doesn't require it. In the end environment, what sort of uh, environments is this product going to see? High or low temperatures, humidity? You want to know what the shelf life is? Does it need to last months or does it need to last, last 15 to 20 years? The volume in the throughput, uh, is the process easy to uh, apply to the board? Uh, does the process have, does the components have fine pitch components because certain final finishes work better with fine pitch components? Does it uh, need high frequency signal? Uh, is it an RF application? Uh, does it need to carry a high frequency signal with no loss of signal integrity? The probability, can, can it be electrical tested with a probe? Uh, thermal resistance. Is it thermal resistant? Will it, it, will it need to survive when drops for shock and drop resistance? So the overview for the OEM, years ago final finishes were formulated to protect the copper from oxidation prior to assembly. Today we need to have a superior and reliable solder joint. It needs to hold up to contact performance, such as probing for electrical tested. It cannot be affected by scratching. It may need to be able to wire bond with either aluminum or gold wire. OSP won't wire bond. ENIG's not too good if the gold is too thin. It must be corrosion resistant and high humidity, high temperature, and sulfur and vitamins. For instance, is the product going to India, Asia, space, defense systems, environments of the Middle East, etc.? They must have extended use life and be reliable for 15 years or more. And most important of all, what does everyone want? To, to have a low cost. Overview designs have changed. The designs have changed. Product is becoming miniaturized, requiring tighter and smaller lines and spaces. Lead-free initiative now requires different solder types and fluxes that must survive higher temperature profiles. More assemblies are no clean. Surface mount technology is more complex. And the, and the number of cycles at assembly has increased, meaning it must survive and allow good solderability over multiple reflows. The product may need to carry high frequency signals, so the finish must be flat. There's also a large amount of exposed metal areas now left on the report boards that are required for electrical testing after the final build. Insertion pins do not contain solder, so these areas need to be protected for the environment. The growth segments in the electronic industry are mainly in three uh, divisions right now. The handheld devices such as smartphones and tablets, the infrastructure industry, also known as the telecommunications, to support a heavy amount of cloud computing and data storage, especially that which supports handheld devices and high-function portables. Automotive, 
which also continues to increase in volume and electronic content per automobile with all the new technologies that are being incorporated in cars, such as backup cameras, internet safety centers, sensors, et cetera. Robin, this slide shows the breakdown of the different surface finish usage worldwide. Would this charge look different if broken down by domestic and offshore manufacturing? I would expect the offshore uh, manufacturing to can contain a larger portion of Hassel and OSP product due to the differences in their technology. So let's dig into each of these surface finishes. Could you please give a brief overview of each of the common finishes and then note some of the key issues found at the OEM and assembly level? Hassel is hot air solder leveling. Hassel is the oldest surface finish. It contains tin lead. Since the Roe and Wee initiative came into effect in 2006, banning new electronic equipment containing specific levels of components, including lead, the use of lead at Hassel has decreased, and lead-free versions are now available. Um, due to these initiatives, the lead-free versions of Hassel have, have been formulated and are now in use. However, areas that require critical, high reliability, very long service life, and the survivability of high temperature products are exempt at this time to the lead-free stipulation. These areas include the aerospace, defense, and high performance electronics. Issues at the OEM level with Hassel include Hassel is removed from the PCB surface uh, through hot air, air knives, which makes the surface uneven and difficult for the components to lay flat at assembly. The lead-free Hassel requires hotter soldering temperatures, which can cause board warpage, making it difficult to place the components. It also is difficult on the solder mask, making it in brittle, which which may allow the underlying copper to be exposed to the environment for potential corrosion. The plated through hole may be plugged or reduced. OSP, Organic Solderability Preservatives, is currently the most used surface finish in the industry. Applications range from low-end to high-frequency server boards. It's also used in selective finishing. Newer formulations make the coating more thermally resistant to the higher temperatures observed in no-lead applications. It is different from other surface finishes because it is an organic coating that is chemically absorbed onto the copper surface. There is no metal-to-metal -metal displacement. Issues at the assembly level include the older versions were not as thermally resistant as the newer versions. Older versions could not withstand more than one lead reflow. After multiple reflows, the organic hardens, so the fluff has to work harder to remove the residues to allow it to solder. Material can transfer to the tip of the probe during electrical test, resulting in false readings. So the probe may require more maintenance, or possibly a different type of probe may be necessary. The thermal stability of the OSP is more important than the thickness of the OSP. Higher thicknesses are detrimental to solder paste flow and wholesale. Solder spread. This slide shows the difference in the solder spread of immersion tin versus OSP. The solder does not spread, so areas of copper are less exposed to the environment. This may or may not decrease the integrity of the solder joint. If the solder only goes up the component leg, then you would not have a strong or complete solder joint. Newer versions, however, have shown an increase in solder spread and the exposed copper is minimal. Immersion tin. Immersion tin is most commonly used in automotive, U.S. military, and aerospace applications. It is excellent for press fit applications. All the formulations contain anti-whiskering agents, 
which help to mitigate tin whiskers but do not completely eliminate them. Issues at the assembly level. With time and temperature, multiple reflows, the loss of pure tin degrades the solder performance. Newer chemical formulations help reduce the loss of pure tin after reflow. The deposit stress is what leads to tin whiskers, which occurs naturally when tin is in direct contact with copper. Immersion silver. Immersion silver is excellent for high frequency applications. It has the greatest conductivity and is flat, so the signal travels toward the top of the circuit, reducing the signal loss. Applications range from low-end product to high reliability product. Top coats have currently been formulated to overcome the tarnish and corrosion issues that occur in aggressive environments. Issues at the OEM level for silver um, this is a cross-section of a solder ball on a pad with microvoids. They are tiny voids at the intermetallic layer of the solder joint, which may contribute to solder joint fracture. Enig. Enig is the highest revenue surface finish and is used in applications that require high reliability. It is also used in the flex market. It is typically a high volume runner. Deposit thickness specifications for the gold is under review with IPC, driven by the high cost of gold and the increased chance of hypercorrosion, or commonly known as black pad, with extended dwell times of the gold. The issues at the fabricator or OEM with Enig include, it's not particularly the fabricator's top choice for surface finishes, but it is run successfully every day globally. There are many processing steps that require numerous chemical analysis. They need to pay attention to the nickel and gold thickness. Low thickness of the nickel will result in poor corrosion and thermal resistance in the final product. Low gold thickness will result in less resistance to thermal conditioning in assembly, and high gold thickness promotes corrosion to the electrolyte nickel or the black pad. Inipig. Inipig originally was developed in the 90s and started to grow in popularity until the price of palladium skyrocketed and the business diminished. It is one finish that can be gold wire bondable and current applications are medical and the U.S. military. Some of the reasons there is still a very low volume is because it is difficult to obtain approval from OEMs for any new finish without any performance history and it is very expensive to process. Interest in this finish is growing due to the gold wire bonding capability and the mitigation of black pad. Issues at the OEM level include too thick of the palladium reduces the solderability performance. It is slower to wet and may contain palladium-rich areas in the solder joint, which is an area of weakness. Palladium does not quickly solubilize into the joint like silver or gold. So Robin, if you were to break down the electronics industry by market sector, what would be the most predominant surface finishes being used in each area? The surface finishes by sector include to the data and telecommunication industry, Typically, silver, OSP, and EMIG are used on the board. The automotive industry, depending upon which part of the world you live in, some people use the silver, some people use immersion tin, and OSP is also used. The high-end consumer products, typically EMIG, silver, and OSP are placed on the board. And for the low-end consumer products, Hassel and OSP are the final finishes of choice. For the aerospace, defense, and high-performance electronics, which typically are lead, um, cannot be lead-free, are Hassel, Immersion, Tim, Enig, and Inipig. 
and for the medical industry, Enig, Enipig, and Silver are the final finishes preferred. Well, that's good information, Robin. Thank you so much for sitting down with us today. This has been a great discussion. Your contact information is being shown on the screen. We hope that everyone enjoyed this session and that we were able to provide information that will help you with your printed circuit board design. Remember, designing and purchasing printed circuit boards should not be difficult. We hope you can join us again for the next PCB Coffee Talk.